baby dress that we've already cut. So first we're going to be picking the individual um, net pieces, fabric pieces, flay pieces that we've already cut. Then make a neck on it. So we'll measure from the upper part to measure about 7 inches or 7.5 inches. When we measure it, we'll mark it like I'm doing right now. And then you measure about 1.5 inches inwards from the edge of the lining. You measure about 1.5 inch inwards and mark it all the way down to the full length of the flea. So the 1.5 inches is for zip allowance. Now the essence of doing this is to avoid the materials, the pieces of flay all coming together, looking bulky or bulgy or untidy while you're working on them. So after you're done marking them, you cut it out using a very sharp scissors. So now we're done cutting out for one, the next thing we'll cut for the other um, pieces of net. You can iron it before cutting it, remember how we iron, you have, to place, um, you have to place paper or fabric on top of your net and then you now use a very hot iron to do the ironing. It's very important that you don't iron directly so that you don't burn your net because the net is a very lightweight fabric. Okay, so after ironing to stretch out the edges of your net, you measure the same dimensions you did in the other one. If you use 7.5 inches in the other one, you're going to measure from the upper edge of the flay. You measure 7.5 inches, then you also measure 1.5 inch inwards and go all the way down. So I'm going to use a chalk for this kind of net. Usually the markings don't show directly on the net. It shows on the fabric or whatever it is you have directly on the net. So you have to make sure it's on top of something so that you can on top of something you can actually see the markings on. So on the net itself you wouldn't see any markings. But when you raise the net slightly, you see the markings on the fabric on the net. So I'm going to repeat all this for the flay, for the taffeta, for the lining, then for the other piece of net.
So you remember a piece of fabric that we also cut um, lining and hard gum stay for. You attach the hard gum stay to the lining using um, very hot iron. Now the, the, the hard gum stay is made up of two sides. I don't know if you can see it from this video. It has a shiny side and then it has a dull colored side. So that shiny side has gum. So and it's to be and it is meant to stick to the lining but the door side does not have comb that's where you place your iron when you're ironing the hard comb stay on the back so you lay your um your material all nicely on the hard comb stay so you can notch the midpoint so that you can be able to lay very well because as you can see the flay is quite bulgy it's quite bulky so you have to note the midpoint so that you don't place it wrongly so now after noting the midpoint I'll iron it with an iron the iron really has to be hot you might need to sprinkle water at some point but don't overdo it So this is the last um, part of the lining, that's the longer part, the longest part of the lining. We're going to attach it to the, the first lining we cut. We're going to attach them on the sides using 0.5 inch sewing allowance. We're also going to do the same thing to the fabric. But in this case, on the fabric, we're not going to be attaching hard gum stay. We'll just, at, we'll just join the fabric pieces together and then Join the lining pieces together, then use the horsehair braid on the base of it. So you take the part that is 13.5 inches and attach to the 13.5 inches on the other side. So the longest part is going to be on the center back and that's about 20 inches long. So after pinning it, we take it to the sewing machine and then we join it using half inch sewing allowance. So when you're done stitching everything, you top stitch all the way around. Now if you notice the hard gum stay didn't exactly go around. So we just either way you top stitch. So even if it went all the way around, you just have to top stitch to hold it all together.
So after doing that, we're going to place the hat of uh, the horsehair braid on the base. So place it on the base, then stitch it all the way to the end on the lining, of course. So we attach the lining to the fabric after we've joined the pieces of the fabric together. We attach the lining to the fabric from the base. Remember to open your fabric and iron it before you start joining it. So now we're actually pinning to notch the midpoints of the fabric so that we don't make mistakes while laying the fabric on top of the lining. We notch up and we notch down. So we do the same thing to the lining too. Then we take the notched points together. Remember, we're joining together on the base. Okay, so remember the rule in joining, we join front to front. When you're joining them, you pin together all the way around from one edge to the other edge. So this is what it should look like after pinning. So after pinning, you take it to the sewing machine and then you stitch it using 0.5 inch sewing allowance. That's the same thing as half inch sewing allowance. So you stitch it all the way down to the other end. So as you stitch, remember to remove your pins, that's very important. So 
So having done that, I I would have top stitched the layer, the, the lining, but then it's going to take a lot of time. So to avoid doing that, I'll just drag the lining up. I'm going to give it a little bit of excess, maybe like one inch excess, so that I'll be able to bend the the line the fabric over to the other side so that I can cover the lining properly on the base so you stitch it all the way down now note the lining and the fabric had the same length but I had to short I had to shorten the lining by one inch so I'm going to do the same thing for this other side then trim off ever so slightly so when you're done trimming off you confirm that they are of the same length that the two sides are of the same length. Once you confirm they are of the same length, you can flip over to the other side and then start rearranging them the way you want it. But then we're also going to do that 7.5 inch trimming on this other fabric. 7.5 inches, 1.5 inches, then you mark it all the way down and cut out. Actually, I was supposed to have done this before before joining the sides together but then more to be on the safe side because of the one inch I shortened I had to do it after I had shortened the one inch okay so this is what we have everything is working together to make sure that the zip sits very well without having so much bulk attached to it So we stitch down using the, the parts we've already cut out, we stitch it using 0.5 inch sewing allowance, we stitch the both sides, then we loosen the threads on the upper side because the upper side would have to be bare and we we'll need stop stitch on that upper side. So you can see the excess fabric flipping over to the other side just because we shortened the lining by one inch. So you trim off excesses. Then you loosen the upper parts. You know I said we weren't meant to stitch it but because of one inch excess we had to stitch it together. So you loosen the excess piece, excess and then do the same thing for the other side then you flip over to the right side so we actually not sharp point so that it will be easier to turn and then you to have a nicer effect after turning So this is our fabric, we'll iron it, after we've ironed it, this is what it looks like. So we'll pin the upper parts together, you can see how nicely and neatly it looks. So after we pin the upper parts together, we top stitch the edges, we hold that small like holding the fabric and the lining together in the front piece. stitch the edges you know top stitch the upper edge too now note we have two rough sides the side piece and then the upper piece so you can already see the slightly cascade effect the horse hair braid is giving to the edge
so you make sure that at every point where you haven't cut out the 1.5 inch um, excess lining that you're actually sewing 1.5 inches off if not you're going to be having the lining protruding at the base of your fabric and that will be nice so here we come to the end of this particular stitch we'll do all remaining trimmings and proceed to the next stage so we've ironed we've stitched we've top stitched and then this is the final appearance so now we're going back to our first pattern which was the upper piece of the baby dress. So we have the darts for each of them and we also have the illusion necklines and the nets to be attached. So the first thing we'll do is that we'll mark out, we'll cut out the darts and use them to mark the darts on the fabric using a chalk. So you mark the darts on the lining, you mark the darts on the chalk, on the fabric and then you stitch them on the machine So remember when you have to mark your darts you have to get exactly the side shape the center shape just make sure you have the right shape so that you don't mark your darts in the wrong position so we we'll mark for the front next thing we'll mark for the back too so remember to pin it with your net so that you don't misplace it because these nets are ever so tiny so and you can easily mistaken them for dirt So now we have the net pieces, we're going to arrange them. In this case, I actually cut about three pieces of net for each side. The essence of cutting three pieces of net is to make it very thick and durable. If you cut out one piece of net, number one, it's going to be light and then it's not going to be durable. It won't have that, you know, deep red effect you need it to have. It's just going to have a normal boring red color so first we pin the two pieces together we cut three pieces for each so we're going to pin two pieces first then we're going to turn over with the third piece so we also do it for the other side of the 
plant. So we do the same thing to the front, we lay out the front pieces, the two of them, then we turn over with the third piece. So it's time for us to sew. So for the ones we actually pinned, we're going to sew all the way around. After sewing it round, we trim off the excess edges. We use the third one to turn the neckline, so we place the third one on, on it, then sew around the neckline using about uh, one half inch or one centimeter. Okay, so you can see the stitching. So we we'll stitched the neckline and then we we'll trimmed off the excess. So right now we're stitching the armhole using 0.5 inches too. So we'll trim off the excess so that you don't see much of the bulk. Seeing much of the bulk makes your work untidy. So we are only stitching the armhole for now in the front piece. So for the back piece, we only turn the neckline for the moment. So we try as much as possible to cut very close to the stitch but not too, not too close to the stitch. So when you turn around, you take it to the iron and iron it thoroughly. So remember to place something on top, preferably I would place paper, lightweight paper because it transfers the heat more easily on this piece. So we're going to top stitch the base too while we do the same thing to the back piece so we take the back piece we stitch all the way around to hold them together then the third piece will be used to turn the neckline
So this is the other side of the back piece. So this is the cover of it, the one we will use to flip the neck over. So we'll pin them together and then we are only stitching the neck. So from the edge we measure 0 0.5 inches and then stitch all the way to the shoulder line. So we'll do the same thing to the other side. There's something about nets. We don't top stitch nets. We only cut off the excess to reduce the bulk and help it balance more. And then we iron very closely and thoroughly. If we top stitch, your work will be very untidy. So this is what we have after ironing. So now note that we didn't flip over the and pits the armhole area of the back piece and that's because we're going to use it we're going to flip it to join the front piece so you have it folded you open it place the join lines to this join lines the join line on the from the neckline so just place them together you can pin them together to secure them then you can see that excess we have on the other side so you flip it backwards isn't that very easy okay so we proceed from here we're going to sew using 0 0.5 inch sewing allowance after joining with 0 0.5 inch sewing allowance we can check our work to see if we did it well then we'll trim off the remaining parts and leaving something very tiny so we'll stitch the sides now now remember we didn't stitch the armhole side of the back piece because we had to flip it so right now we'll stitch it because we're done flipping after stitching it you trim off your excess and then flip over to the right side so remember to notch okay so this is what we have isn't it beautiful so you can actually do this too make sure when you do it you do it carefully and do it very well don't just watch the video without practicing you just have to keep practicing it's key to your learning this so you also do the same thing to the other side i remember to cut off your excess pieces of thread else you won't have a very neat work So this is what we have after joining the two sides. So we'll top stitch the base of the down, then we'll attach it to the fabric. So for us to attach it, we'll notch a little down, make a little cut, like 0.5 inches. Okay, so this is our center. We'll make a little cut to help us to be able to go around the sweetheart neck very well. So we'll pin the layers together. Remember the rule, front to front. So we place this open sides together. Then we stitch using 0 0.5 inch sewing allowance.
So after we're done joining them, we notch the neckline. Okay, this is what we have after stitching together. So we're going to flip over with the lining first before we notch the neckline. So we do the same thing for the back piece, but it's two back pieces. Joining with 0.5 inch. Make sure you place your net in the middle so that you can have some excesses on the left and on the right. You place the net in the middle. You place the you place the lining on the other side. After you notch it, then you stitch using 0.5 inch along the sweetheart neckline. After joining this, you notch. While you're notching, make sure you come very close to this thread used in joining it, but don't come too close, else you're going to cut the thread and then it will loosen what you've already sewn. So after you've notched, you top stitch. You move the bulk to the to the lining and then top stitch the lining. So you also do the flipping of the lining on the back piece too.